Matt Emerson, it's time for the 30 day work from home challenge. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm ready to rock it. I hope there's people out there that are ready to join me and to get up, get dressed and get to work virtually. And did you know that LA's sprawling 4,310 acre Griffith Park is one of the largest urban parks in the nation? We'll explore it today on Wandering Zen. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 112. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, we're, uh, what, uh, week three into COVID-19, about a week and a half into self-quarantining or self-sheltering at home? What, what, it, it depends how, on how what you state doing? you're in. Well, actually, that's a good in. point. It does, it does depend on what state we're in. Here in Nevada, uh, 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 David, as you can see here, if you're watching us uh, in the video, uh, we have our awesome friend David Squire back with us today, back making Coach David is with us on, on our podcast today. He's been on numerous times. But for David and I, it was, uh, for Nevada, it was March 17th. That's when the governor came out and said, uh, we're gonna close the strip, close all the casinos, close everything down and stay home for Nevada. And people and were like, what? no, that's not gonna, that can't happen. What? And it has been, and, and frankly, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, just gonna take its time, but maybe because we did that soon, we're, we don't have as many cases, but you know how that all is. It's, it just, it just takes time. And, you know, everybody says, oh, it's not bothering me. And then all of a sudden they're the new hotspot, right? What about for California? It happened when? Oh, a little Sorry. before that, a couple of days before that, I think. When we, right. When okay. So. Anyway, it's been it's been interesting. You know, I, I was in Florida about two and well, a little over two weeks ago. I got home, and uh, I've only been to the store twice. Other than that, I haven't even left. Well, I, I've walked in every I walk every day, but I haven't really gone anywhere in two weeks. I'm I'm actually kind of used to this. It's I kind of like it. I'm a hermit. I, 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 I didn't know more, I was a hermit. I I'm a wandering more, hermit. What's that all about? Yeah. But David, how about you? Have you have you been uh, for this last week plus? You do to mention you, you have family out in Pahrump. You've been out with them. Yeah, I spent some time out there with them. Uh, the night. The nice thing is with technology, you know, we can maintain our business from without you know, a blip a blip in the radar, right? Um, we um, yeah. So I got to get out, spend some time with them, help them out a little bit, um, do some projects, get my hands dirty, um, get a suntan. And uh, and still maintain my business. So yeah, it, it's uh, it's been it's been an adjustment, but it's been interesting. It's actually I, I agree with you, Matt. I think there's some positives to it. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to talk some more about that. All right, so let's dive in. First up, we're going to talk to David uh, about what he's been doing with his what he's been doing to keep his coaching clients on track. We're going to talk about this 30 day uh, work from home challenge that we're launching April 1st. And then in our Wandering Zen segment, we're talking uh, about Griffith Park. And you have we have a special guest. Another special right? guest. A lot of special guests in the virtual podcast studio today. So let's jump on in. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, welcome to the real estate segment of the Wondering But Not Lost podcast. All the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This is episode 112. Definitely go there because we are going to have uh, David's information in there as well as this challenge that we're going to get to in a moment. So, David, uh, let me just turn it over. We've had David on before. David and Matt and I go way back. David and I go back way back. I was I was yeah. his broker umpteen thousand years ago. Uh we started a, a, a real great coaching relationship way back then when we were both at Prudential here in town. And and we, ha over the years, have gone to different companies, come back together again. We're in different companies again now. But we've always maintained a relationship of getting together and working on our coaching and developing products. He's instrumental in our real estate team builder program. And he has a really thriving coaching business, has his own team here in uh, Las Vegas. So. So and David, he's also just a super fun guy. He totally <laughs> is. We all work together at, at our previous we, brokerage. We eat well together. Say yeah. again? I said we eat well together. Yes, we do. Uh, I like uh, <laughs> so, uh, David, let's let, uh, jump in and talk about we we had one of those brainstorming meetings really just a little bit before all this really started, so this lockdown thing started to happen, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that Jan, that was that was a, a a big eye opener for me. As our meetings always are, right? Every time, you know, like you said, we get we manage to maintain getting together regularly enough to just stay ahead of things and and always keep our creative juices flowing, all of those sort of things. And that was one of those eye opener meetings. And you brought to the table something at that point that really really struck a chord with me, and that was, and this was prior to this was the Wednesday prior to. Um, uh, Black Friday, which was grocery store D Day, right? <laughs> right, right. And so, I, literally, it was it was just when it was starting to heat up before the panic, right? And and you brought and it may have been this may have been a tickler to your th- your thought process. However, you brought up the fact that we need to bulletproof our businesses and we need to coach our people to bulletproof our businesses, mm-hmm. and not because of COVID, because the everything else that can come up in sure. the market, right? And you know, there's all these discussions we've had over the years about, you know, uh, it was the market different six months ago than it is today? Uh, will it be different six months from now than it is today? Um, and what exactly can we do about it? Yeah. No, nothing. Right. <laughs> Just change our attitude and adjust. That's what well, we can do. We can adapt. Thing, right. The only thing we can do about it is is adjust ourselves, right? So that really started me to thinking. And we had a lot of other great conversations, but you know, overall it was, regardless of what changes or shifts, are we prepared for that shift? And the very next morning, you inspired me, Jan, by this conversation to get on the phone with not only every single one of my uh, clients in my SOI, all of my agents around the country that I network with, and most importantly, my, uh, my coaching clients that I coach every day. So I coach some pretty high level people that have big momentum right now. Um, and our market was at that point, our market, our inventory was getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, and we started to see the market shift back towards a really extreme seller's market. Again, we were right on the cusp of that. And um, all of a sudden er, the brakes went on and it was time for us to uh, have some different discussions. So I got on the phone with every person I coach immediately the next morning and outside of our normal coaching and had a conversation about how we were going to adjust or shift to make sure that we were connecting with our clients, being supportive and coming most mostly from the abundance standpoint, right? All of us, all of us, I don't know about you, Matt. I know Jan and I have had discussions, but I have had my scarcity moments over the last few weeks where yes. I, you know, I got, I, I started to come from scarcity rather than abundance. Yeah. It's easy to slip into that right now. It really is. You know, mm-hmm. it, everywhere it surrounds us. Jan, you said it this morning, you, you, uh, you were, as I was succumbing to all everything you hear, you know, everything you hear on the news and it's almost like you have to turn it off. Right. Oh, absolutely. I, I did. Yeah. I yeah. check in, but I, I was watching, I was consuming too much of it in the early mornings or late at night, you know, and then it's the same stuff and it's the same story and it's not yeah. good news. And so yeah, then you, you get yourself a- into a, a, you can get yourself into a dark place. And I was watching yeah. a lot of people around me do the same thing. All of our eight, a lot of our agents, not just mm-hmm. showing up and, even showing up remotely like we've already established. So yeah, I was concerned for myself and everybody else. A horrible, a horrible narrative to have running around in your head. Not a good soundtrack. Right, right. That's that's definitely that definitely causes that whole scarcity mindset, right? So so I thought, how can we come from contribution? How can we come from abundance and reach out to our people with the, a positive message? I mean, it, it, it's it's an opportunity to reach. So there's two things that came to mind, Jan, quickly. One was um, when you move from one company to another, which we've experienced and we've coached mm-hmm. many times, Matt, you as well. Absolutely. And, uh, and that, that can either be an opportunity uh, or it can be a setback, right? right. So what we coach is in a transition that you take it, you turn it into an opportunity, right? You reach out to everybody, you announce, you scream from the rooftops. Well, this is the same opportunity for us with our clients but it really shows it, it's it, if we come from contribution, it really shows that we care about our people and we truly do. Right. Right. So, so that was the first thought. And the second thought was immediately, you know what the questions are going to be. I'm a buyer right now. Oh my gosh. Should I be looking at homes? I'm a seller right now. I'm going to wait. Right. Those are the instantly the concerns. And those are the concerns that my coaching clients and myself <laughs> come from scarcity have had in running around in my head. Sure. I'm making things up. And, um, and I haven't even talked to people yet. Right. And so I'm making up those concerns. And, and so I'm projecting that as a, and, and so I etch a sketch head, erase it <laughs> and let's get on the phone and come from abundance. So, mm-hmm. so I, I used as, as a, as a start point, I used 
the market conditions in our peak market. So if you look at our peak market in Las Vegas, it was about 2007 was when we experienced the hottest seller's market on record. There were right. seven days of inventory. It was it was hottest ever on record. Crazy. And then, and then you fast forward to about 2010, 11 was the trough. Somewhere around early 2011, I think, was the absolute trough. We went from seven days inventory to 24 months of inventory. Great perspective here. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, so, so you could say in 2007, it was the hottest market we've ever had, the best market we've ever had on record. Just and you show up and you'd have a buyer. Right. In, in 30 offers, buyers are paying. Yeah. Fifty thousand above list price, list price above appraisal, paying all the seller's closing costs. Fast forward to 2011, worst market in history. Um, buyers are, you know, sellers are dying to sell their homes, right? Yeah. Giving them away, paying all of buyers' closing costs, anything they can do, right? Short sales, foreclosures, right? So that was considered the worst market. However, can I ask you guys a question? Could you say that 2011 was the best real estate market we've ever had? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good. Like that. I like that. <laughs> and could you say that if you pivoted to short sales and you understood how to do all that? And you know? or there's two perspectives, right? Yeah. If you're a buyer in 2011, it's the best real estate market you've Absolutely. ever seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can say the same for 2007 if you look at perspectives. So it's all in what we project and all in how we understand the market. Right. And and it's our mindset, right? So if you come from abundance. 2011, there were more fortunes made, far more fortunes made than the fortunes that were made in 2007 that were lost in 2010. That's right. right? Well, and so, fast forward from there, we now are in a position here and in most a lot of places in the country that went through the same thing mm -hmm. with uh, people with a lot of equity. So right. it, it's not like 2008 when we had the crash, the financial crash. Mm -hmm. There right. are people, uh, I saw a statistic that 50% of homeowners in the US have more than 50% equity. All right. When we had that other I horrible time, from that market. Yep. Yep. So, and couple that with uh, the best interest rates we've seen in our in yeah. My life. Yeah. No there kidding. I mean, Jen, when you were my uh, first, when you were one of my first brokers, I think interest rates were eleven percent. Yeah. 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 Ten, yeah. We jumped on our back. Or right? ni nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is where some of the new people in real estate don't have the perspective of um, how of going through the cycles because it's always cyclical anyway. Yeah. Uh, but those of us that do, we're just like, okay, we're in another cycle and we've got to make the adjustment. And when you make the adjustment, you thrive. You know, and one of the, and, and that I, I agree with you. And one of the things that I think is a really good perspective from a coach's perspective, also from a, a uh, from a real estate agent or business owner's perspective is we're all coaches. Our job is not, we're not salespeople. Our job is to educate our clients, period. If we come from a salesperson perspective, Great. we're way off. If we come from an educational perspective where our job solely is to educate our clients, that's where we have an advantage, right? Totally. So, so, so quickly that conversation with my coaching clients was, and, and I followed suit with my SOI as well, was guys, okay, look, first of all, the opportunity to call our people is simply to say, come from abundance, come from concern, right? Call our clients and say, how, just simply, how are you doing? Just, just want to know how you're doing. Right exactly. now, there are some there are some components of this that I didn't expect that I'm finding, which is if you have 45 calls to make to your SOI this week on your on your to do list or your 411 or whatever you follow in your perfect week, you have 45 calls to make this week. 30 are answering. Yeah. There's right. Wow. Wow. So that, that's something I didn't expect. Wow. Everyone Good point. Is Normally, you make 45 calls. How many answer? Sure. Yeah, you yeah. might get five, None. three. Yeah. There's no right. one to hide now. <laughs> right, right. And, right. and, they're, and they're, they are longing for someone to talk to, even exactly. a realtor. That, you know, Matt, that's the other point is you've got to follow your script. So I'm keeping forward in front of me, you know, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, you know, because that is an abundant, that is, a, that is from contribution. That's about them, not about us. And that's the conversations we need to have. It's simply, how are you? And what questions do you have? Right. right. So right. We, we pretty much can predict where that conversation goes. And it, it did. It went exactly where we would have predicted, which is, oh, my God. And so what the way I've been coaching and I think where we're seeing the most success is simply, Jan, you talked about the um, the uh, the emotional, the steps of, of uh, I'm sorry, five stages of grief, five stages of grief. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously, they're immediately they're going to come up with, oh, my God. And so, of course, you don't want to quantify that per se, 
However, you do want to acknowledge, right? I understand where you're coming from. I honestly, I have my concerns as well. However, this too shall pass, which I think we all agree it, it will. Mm -hmm. um, I think I don't think it'll have as big an impact as we as we as we think it will, or a lot of people think it will. However, I'm not the expert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I can say is I I I, I completely understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from, and I have my own concerns. Um, I, and by the way. Um, I think, what are the two things that we never bring up in mixed company? Uh, politics and religion. Yeah. Right. I think we need to keep that out of the conversation. Absolutely. Right. 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 I don't think we need to inject our opinions in there. However, I think we just need to come from contribution and say, how are you? Um, you know, what questions do you have? And this too shall pass. And then the conversation simply can lead into from a real estate, even though this is a really a tough time for America, from a real estate perspective, this may have some advantages for us as sellers and buyers. And so one of the first things that's important is understanding your market and the numbers. So if you don't know that inventory levels went up to 5,100 homes in Las Vegas last week, and we've now got more inventory than we've had in the last six weeks, um, you probably aren't educating your people, right? So understanding what's going in your market, on in your market with numbers, understanding what's going on with interest rates. Do you know that as soon as this happened, interest rates went up? Yeah. We had we had interest rates. I I we were locking someone in at under three percent on a fifteen year conventional with twenty percent down, right? Mm -hmm. Interest rate in, within three days went up to four and a half percent. If you do, if you aren't aware of that and you can't educate your people, you need to have conversations with your lender every day right now. And you need to be tracking and following some of the places. I just got some great information yesterday that because they were so inundated and it was so volatile. That's why they were protecting their margins. And then yeah. there's some big stuff that came out about non-conforming jumbo loans. They're pausing on those. So right now, right now in the short term, Fannie, Freddie, FHA loans are the way to go. Yeah. Uh, cash is always king. But the big point about interest rates is with the government, with the Fed coming in and backing the, the mortgage-backed securities, the predictions right now are it'll settle back down again and it won't rise and it may even come back to kind of where it was before all this craziness. But the whole point David's making, if you don't stay on top of that and you can find that out, follow housingwire.com. There's a couple great lender sites where you can get that information or a good lender gets all that information and passes it on to you. Lender relationship is, is key. It really is. And so what happened in that story is they went up to four and four and a half percent. We floated. We didn't lock. Thank goodness. And then um, yesterday, my lender called me and said, we locked him at 2.75. Wow. And she got him at 2.75. See? So, and the client is thrilled, right? And here's a buyer that's asked me, David, is this the right time? And I said, well, take a deep breath. So, Jan, the two, what are the two questions that every person we are coaching or discussing this with right now um, uh, are, are asking us? The, the, from the agent's perspective? Well, they're asking us what they should, how they should answer. How they should this. answer, like, yeah. So I want to share. What are the ones you're getting? It's like when how do I? I don't know what to say to people. Is what people are doing. I've been exactly. uh, adapting the the script and uh, the script that I heard from a Tom Ferry uh, mm -hmm. webinar. I absolutely love. Okay, mm -hmm. so I want to share that if you haven't heard this. Okay, mm -hmm. so I love. Let's go back to what David said. So we we've been talking about this the last couple weeks on the podcast mm -hmm. anyway. Coming from service, coming from value. Right now, you have got to communicate with compassion and and uh, empathy and not be predatory in any way. That's, you know, come from abundance. But calling your people every day, setting a goal and having that conversation using Ford. I love Ford, right? Let's one more time with that. Family, occupation, recreation, dreams. That that works anytime. That's how you start conversations with people. The most valuable script I've ever, ever right? heard of. And uh, cut, touch on one or more of those. And then just how I'm just checking in with you and that you can switch to by how you're still working remotely and how you've adjusted your business. But let me go through that script when somebody says, how's the market? Mm -hmm. How's the market? Is this a good time to sell or buy? And this is the script that I love. And I, I'll just go with the version that I like on it. So it's like, David, David is my client. And he asked me that. I'm going to say, David, you know, it's day by day, even hour by hour. Uh, many of our our buyers and sellers are taking a pause, and I 100% are backing them up on that. I'm just keeping them informed uh, through my newsletters and contacts and texts and so forth about what's happening in the market so they can stay informed. And some of our buyers and sellers need to move. They need to buy. They need to sell. So we're helping them through that because we've adjusted our business and in implemented all the safety protocols for what we need to do. We're using smart marketing 
for sellers, and we've uh, totally switched over to virtual showings, open houses, and so on. Uh, you know, and that's it. You're basically saying, if you want to pause, I'm here for you. How can I help you? I'll be ready when you are. If you need to sell, we've already adjusted our, our uh, the way we do business. We can do everything remotely practically right now. Mobile notaries, we can do, we can do a, a seller, we can work with a seller completely online, send out the virtual tour. Because right now, it's always been this way. If you're listing homes, and David just said in Vegas, the numbers are up for listings. People are putting their home on the market. There's lots of reasons why. They may, they may be concerned that the market's going to drop and they want to get out their cash. They might have lost money in the stock market. They may have, they just want to go ahead and, you know what this is doing for a lot of people? Because I can relate to this. I think I'd like to be closer to my family. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm going to make that move I had planned on. This is what people are going through sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of things that we can't be afraid to have those conversations. It's not the time to hunker down and not leverage all of this because when we get on the other side of this, I personally feel people are going to have, have gotten used to and enjoy the convenience of a virtual meeting like what we're doing right now. We're using a program called Be Live. We can still develop a relationship. If I didn't know you and you're my lead, I could have a conversation with you and get to know you Absolutely. right now and then uh, build that relationship when you're ready to buy or sell. So it's brilliant. It is. And Jan, you know what's interesting is I thought from a global standpoint, because that's that's always a, a piece of our business, and I think that's a, a, a untapped opportunity from a global standpoint. Think about how we're positioning ourselves right now to tap into global opportunities, right? right. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Someone in um, in Australia can come to our open house. Are you kidding me? This is huge opportunity, right? So this Back to what Jan O'Brien said to me on our Wednesday meeting um, was we need to look at bulletproofing our businesses and how can we have an advantage when the market shifts, right? We are, unfortunately, we know short sales. So Jan, you and I are going to survive. However, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but, uh, well, yeah. and that's a worst case scenario. And, and I've told our, our, our group, it, it, look guys, it, it, we don't know what's going to, nobody can predict. That's why you don't, when somebody says to you as a client says to you, well, what would you do? You always have to pivot back and say, I don't have the same situation as you. Let's talk about your reasons. Let's get to your why. Let's discover why you're thinking about selling or buying. And let me talk to you about that, right? Of course. Yeah, I mean, knowing their why is, is, is the start of everything. So there's there's two pieces to this. that I, I, I So yes, those are the two conversations that I have personally had with my clients, my active clients and my SOI, David. Um, you know, so I have a couple uh, active buyers that have been in the trenches looking and I've gotten calls where they said, David, should we put this on hold? And knowing their motivation, I know they're motivated. The answer for them is probably no. Uh, and so you have to look at. So I think my perspective is look at the positives on both sides right now. I mean, what are the mm -hmm. positives for buyers? So here's the positives for buyers. In my opinion, is do you think there's less buyers right now, less competition right now than there was three weeks ago? I think so. Do you think you have a better opportunity at the houses that are really the good ones? Right. Yes, and, and here's the reason why. For sure, the mm -hmm. i buyers are on pause because they they're waiting. Right? They're waiting to see what happens. So they're not coming in with their cash and outbidding under those three those houses under three hundred grand. That's exactly, that's one reason. The other reason is a lot of buyers are back, pausing. Right. Right. And some, some of those buyers, again, I, I agree with you with, uh, with, with um, say, I completely saying, I completely support you. If you, if you feel like you want to pause, however, if we are educating them properly, I, I feel that less of those buyers out there would be pausing right now. If we could point out some of the advantages. Good point. That. And then the other one is look at the interest rates. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. Correct. Interest are incredible right now so you have less competition more inventory than we had three weeks ago and lower interest rates so there are complete opportunities out there right now and and the fact that we are uh, harnessing uh, our tech you know tech uh, technology to still get exposure for our listings there's really no reason that a buyer couldn't move forward and add to that the people that are thinking about that now i 100 percent agree with what you just said i think it's exactly what you said it a little while ago your job as the as the trusted advisor here and the consultant and the coach is to lay out all the pros and cons sure. and let them decide sure. so that's perfect um uh, but the people why i think that it's awesome to continue with that is that people are home and if they've got real mm -hmm. estate on their mind what are they doing they're looking they're online they're searching 
you, you said that the key to all of this in any market, Dan, you said it earlier in this conversation, which was, um, look, people always need to buy or sell real estate. Correct. The, the, all the, it doesn't matter what market we're in. We've seen the best and the worst markets. And one thing we know is true is, A, real estate long-term always goes up, right? Or is that this way? Up. <laughs> um, real estate always goes up. Uh, and we know that people always need to buy or sell real estate. People have new babies. They get divorces. They get married. They have uh, they get uh, job transfers. There's so many reasons people always need to buy or sell, right? It's people, when someone says to you, Jan, should um, uh, I know that the seasonality says it's slower in December. Should I wait till February to put my home on the market? <laughs> we have we have objection handlers for that, don't yeah, we? Absolutely. There's less buyers competing, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, out there on the market when buyers are looking on gen. So do you think that buyers that are out there looking today are serious buyers? Yeah. Yeah. So, so then we go to the seller's question, which is, which is the bigger concern. How are we on time? Okay. Okay. So we go to the seller. So the biggest concern my coaching clients and my real estate clients have are on the seller side. Should I wait to weather this? So I had two conversations this week. One was with the buyer and I went over the scripts and dialogues that you shared and the script, you know, my scripts and dialogues about pros and cons in the market and just educated him that this was just yesterday. I actually had two this week, but he said, I'm meeting with the lender tomorrow morning. Let's move forward, right? Because he sees the opportunity. And I had a conversation with the seller yesterday and the seller said, you know, he's a contract on a purchase. He doesn't need to sell. He said, should we wait this out? And I said, well, we can't. Uh, However, let's talk about your motivation. And we did. We went through his why and, and, and you know his reasons for selling and all of that. And it didn't really make sense for him to wait because in you know, if you look at it from this perspective, so interest rates, do they affect sellers? For the interest rate? Yeah. Only if they're gonna go buy. No, no, no. Does it affect does it, interest rates being low affect saleability of a property? No. Well, yes, it can. If it can if there's people that can't buy the houses, of course, you know. Right, because buyers toss them out. Yeah. Well, Right, so 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 if you have a buyer that has more buying power right now in this market, they the do. has more selling power. Absolutely, right? so yeah. We're affecting both sides of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that less sellers, more sellers, are hesitant to put their home on the market right now? I I am actually finding no. Well, some it, see this is the interesting exactly. thing. It depends on them. It depends if they don't want people in their houses. If they don't, if they're concerned for that, if they're not, if they're worried about what they're going to do. I mean, that's why it's a tough question to say generally. Right. So, so if you looked at the numbers, we dipped about by about 60 homes last week. So we're still in the low sevens, right? 700 homes come on the market a week. We were up to about a thousand at one point. However, right now we're down to about 700. And I think that we'll see a dip in, in um, new listings. However, we've also seen a dip in new contracts and closings, which means we had a fallout rate. Right? Right? Yes, absolutely. So, we had a lot of back on markets. Were you sure. tracking that? Uh, I, I am tracking back on markets. It's, it's not as big as, of a percentage as you would think. However, it is there, but exactly. that doesn't affect our new listings, right? right. Unless we right. pull them off the market and relist them, which I don't think that's a factor. Right? Sure. So, you know, we still have 700 listings coming on a week. I feel that that will dip slightly, which will create um, less competition on the new listings for sellers, right? right? So you put your home on the market right now and less people are putting their home on the market right now. We've got less competition than you would have had a month ago. Now we know that the buyers that are looking today are the strongest, are the most motivated buyers that are out there possible, right? Period. They they are motivated, right? Just like Chris, someone who's looking on December 20th is a motivated buyer. Absolutely. Right? So great interest rates, super motivated buyers, less competition. But there's one more factor that I realize plays into this. Do you want to be this person that goes, everybody that waits to put their home on the market right now? Uh, as soon as that we get past the point yeah. where everyone gets comfortable, good point. There's going to be a flood of people coming on the market, and you're just going to be one of those people. Or do you want to get your home on the market right now and take advantage of technology? Take advantage. What do we have in the MLS now that we never had before? Coming soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you want to take advantage of pre-marketing your home in this period right now, or do you want to wait till the all the cattle's all the cattle's <laughs> <laughs> or the cattle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. All the cattle comes onto the market, right? So, great point. So, so it, it, I, I believe it's an opportunity for a seller to get their home prepared, get their photography done, get our virtual tours produced, get all of our technology in place, build our websites, do all of that stuff, pre market that home through the MLS, through social media, all of those resources, and be 
potentially a month ahead of another thousand people that totally, are going to totally agree. This is awesome perspective. And if you're listening, uh, if everybody's listening right now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about, let me just jump you guys off here just for a second. Uh, I asked David to help me in this and I'll tell you, you're going to get more of what David and I were just doing. If you are looking to get some motivation in the month of April, I want you to, uh, I want to welcome you and invite you to this thing we're going to call the 30 day work from a home challenge. Okay. It is going to start technically on the first, but next Monday and Tuesday, we're going to do a launch from nine to 10 AM Pacific. And it's going to be getting you ready to do the 30 days. And so let me just tell you high level what we're going to talk about. So the commitment is to keep you on track and, and schedule a, a perfect week. David and I have forever been talking about a perfect week and a perfect day and how you can work remotely. By the end of this 30 days, our goal is that you'll have that daily success plan. You'll master your CRM. You're going to be able to handle all this virtual showings, virtual open houses, and how do you conduct business? How do you take listings? How do you, the scripts and dialogues that we were just talking on and David was just hitting, how you can be a boss on video and social media in, in uh, really really own your online presence. These are all things we're going to accomplish in the next, for the month of April. Now the bottom line on that, if you do this, if you come with us on this journey and we're gonna do it via Monday uh, uh, Zooms where we're going to walk you through specifically scripts and dialogues and how to do the virtualness using Zoom. And then we're gonna have some Friday happy virtual hours, okay? If you are interested in this, you need to do, go to the link that is in the show notes over at WBNL Podcast at uh, episode 112, but it's joinhomeconnectamerica.com, and it's uh, it's kind of hard to read it out here, but it's 30-day-challenge-registration. So a little bit hard if you're just listening, but I, <laughs> easy. Yeah, we should have made a, a simpler URL maybe. Uh, so anyway, let me get you guys back in here. All right, cool. So 30 day challenge, David, you're up with me. We're going to, we're going to have some fun coaching people through how to weather this. Frankly, I see this as I'm already being more productive and because I'm not driving all around. And I, as I, as we said at the beginning of our, our talk today, I think so many people are working from home and working remotely and they've gotten used to zoom. Zoom seems to be the thing across the country and the world everybody's using. I don't even know how their servers are maintaining uh, the use. They must, you know, and I uh, should have bought stock in that company uh, for God's sake. But the bottom line is I think consumers, buyers and sellers are going to like continuing to work in this medium. They already were. I think we were as a group, as a group, as, as a professional industry, weren't as up to it except for the people that are really into tech. Uh, but we're going to help people we're embrace certainly that. We've been talking about it for a long time, though. I mean, this is forcing people to do it, which is actually kind of yeah. cool. I, I agree. So anyway, 30-day challenge. If you're in, just go to the show notes over at WBNL Podcast. We'll have a link for you, and you can uh, just thrive with us. We're ready to help people who want to thrive. And on the other David side Squire. of this, you're just stronger. Yeah. David, David Squire, I love your insights. I'm telling you, you guys just brought some silver lining to this cloud, and it was really awesome uh, to, to listen to that. You're very motivational, Mr. Squire. Absolutely. Thank, Powerful thank stuff. You. Jan, I, I do want to say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm – Virtually every one of my coaching clients are thriving as a result of this. They have all adhered to, you know, business as usual, stay positive, come from abundance, come from contribution, and it's working. I mean, it is clearly working. So awesome. there is an opportunity. Well, let's have some community support and make it happen together because we are all in this together. I know that sounds cliched, but we are. And, we, and I feel like we're forging stronger relationships right now. I know I am, I can see it. It's just very, perspective is everything. So thank you for your insights for sure. I wrote some notes down because I really wanna dial in with those dialogues of the pros, the, the positives. There's positives for sellers and buyers. And if you can harness what David kind of walked through, you're gonna help people make the best decision for them. Understanding your numbers, the market and interest rates are key too. You have to be able to have a clear picture of that. And Jan, if you want me to share that in our 30 day challenge, I'd be happy to do that. No, um, totally. You're, you're going to be the expert on that because it's no matter what market you're in, the, the principles apply and we'll be able to share and David will be able to show you how he tracks the numbers and how he's able to be that expert, be that trusted advisor because he's a student of the numbers. That was the thing I got the most. There were two things when we met, we always coach each other. So I shared some ideas with David. Yeah. David shared, uh, a better knowledge and understanding of how to really stay on top of the market and 
it's more important now not to go month to month. You got to go week to week. You week have to week. stay on top of it. And he really, I was like, oh my God. I, as a matter of fact, I, I said, I want you to come train my agents on this. So we will be doing that. And uh, the other one is your agent to agent building a referral network. No better time to do that virtually as well. So yep. you, can, you can coach other agents around the country with the things you're doing. And trust me, that will be brilliant. That will Network in dividends. Listen, you're going to have some ideas that you should be paying us about, I don't know, two, three thousand dollars a piece for, right? For coaching. Yeah. Uh, not kidding. Seriously. No, we're, we're, with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no it, we're here to help and share and get you guys working and it all good and spread the love. And, and, and every, there's enough business out there for everybody right now. Thanks, I love it when, when, when Jan O'Brien uh, comes back from meeting with you, David. She is fired up. It's totally. awesome. It's like, That's I'm going to meet with David. I'm like, oh, God, I got to to do. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get that in place. He took that whole idea to another level. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. So it's awesome. I'm excited really to work awesome. with you through this 30 days because we are going to just help people big time. And then when we're coaching, then, of course, we're getting coached and we're all being better for it. Thanks for taking the time with us today. I know how busy you are, too. And uh, come join us on the 30 day challenge. Check out our show notes and get all the details. Thanks, bud. Good stuff. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that is a wrap for another WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. This was episode 112. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Brand, that was our first little uh, uh, technology snafu since we started doing video. So our Zen, yeah. uh, if you uh, are watching this and you uh, missed the Zen, it's uh, because we couldn't get that video to work for our special guest. And then we but, had issues with my audio and yeah. our backup plan. But but don't don't fear, it never fails. We have the backup, and that's the third backup plan, Plan right. C. Uh, you'll be able to go over to your favorite podcast uh, platform and hear our wanderings in this uh, week on audio, just like Plus, our first 99 episodes. Well, and we'll have the audio of the Zen in episode 112, and where we're also once again inviting you to come take the 30 day work from home challenge with us. All the information and the registration link, lots of great content totally free. We really want to support everybody along a journey of helping us all get through the next 30 days. And who knows, maybe we'll continue on, but at least 30 days of great content, support, accountability, coaching, and help you get some business. How about that? I like that. All right, everybody, make it a great week and we'll see you next week. And remember, be forever wandering safely, but not lost. (laughs) 